since of 1947 have played a big role in shaping union management relations in this country today. The Taft-Hartley amendments had the effect of shifting the balance of power from unions to employers in the time after the passage of the National Labor Relations Act in 1935. As you know from your study of labor history, union power and management power have ebbed and flowed over time, depending on the state of the economy, the role of the government, etc. But for most of the first 150 years of this country, employers were on the offensive and had most of the bargaining power. In 1935, with the passage of the National Labor Relations Act, workers were given the right to organize, bargain, and strike, and the federal government said they would enforce those rights. So from 1935 to 1947, unions had a significant amount of bargaining power. However, after World War II, unions engaged in a wave of strikes that turned public opinion against them. And employers used that opportunity to get Congress to pass amendments to the National Labor Relations Act. And these were called the Taft-Hartley Amendments. Among the various things that Taft-Hartley did was to create union unfair labor practices. Up until 47, employers could violate the National Labor Relations Act by firing somebody illegally or threatening someone. But there were no provisions for unions to violate employees' rights. Now, with union unfair labor practices, if a union organizer threatened a person in terms of uh, getting them to vote for an election, or if they coerced someone, now they could be charged with an unfair labor practice. Secondly, Taft-Hartley created some particular problems for unions in terms of union membership. Uh, Taft-Hartley outlawed the closed shop. Uh, the closed shop is when an employee has to belong to the union before they even get the job. That is now illegal because of Taft-Hartley, except in the construction and the entertainment industries. Taft-Hartley also created right-to-work laws, which means that states could pass laws that would outlaw union shops. And union shops are simply when you have to belong to a union to keep your job in the workplace. Since 47, 22 states have passed right-to-work laws. Union shops are illegal in those states. That greatly weakened the labor movement. Perhaps the biggest thing that Taft-Hartley did was to give employers significantly more rights under the Act. It gave employers the rights to overtly and aggressively oppose union organizing drives. Now, because of Taft-Hartley, employers can speak out against unions. They can tell employees why they shouldn't join unions in the most aggressive of terms. Another thing it did was to create a 60-day rule, 60-day um, cooling off injunction. Let's say the mine workers go out on strike and shut the coal industry down nationally. If that strike threatens the national welfare, the president can go to court and get the courts to make the miners go back to work for 60 days. Of course, when that happens, the miners lose all of their bargaining power. So this actually also weakened unions. There were a number of other provisions of Taft-Hartley, but when you put them all together, what Taft-Hartley did was swing the balance of power at that point in time from a position where unions had a great deal of strength back towards employers. And that's basically been the impact of Taft-Hartley right up to today.